um, Sabrina is writing her last letter home. Yes. She sits down That's in that the cafe. cafe. Yes. I love yes. that moment. Yeah, it's, it's a good moment because it's basically, it's, it's the last thing you see of Paris for That's about, I ate for last about night. an hour. Really? <laughs> This is where uh, a scene in French Kiss has been shot. Okay. It's, uh, you may remember, if you've uh, recently seen it, it's uh, the scene where um, she's been pickpocketed, yeah. and the pickpocket has taken about everything, has taken about everything, all her papers and everything. We just and saw that a few weeks but, ago. But her friend knows, or he thinks he knows, who stole it, yes. who stole the stuff, and then they, they pay him a visit, and it's yeah. about. It's about halfway down the street, halfway up the street, I should say, more or less at the level of, of, of the Afghani restaurant. Okay. And then they come down and they walk down the street here to this corner where he's trying to force some money in onto her. And yes, she exactly. Throws it onto yeah. the ground. And he leaves her, and, he and leaves she's her. standing yeah, she there all alone. And then and she then returns she after about five <laughs> steps <laughs> yes. to pick the money off the street. Yeah, exactly. so that's the, that's right. you know, as long as she was in Europe, the Americans didn't mind very much. But when she was, when she was about to make a comeback uh -huh. in Hollywood, in the famous movie Paint Your Wagon, huh. with Clint Eastwood and huh. Marvin. Yeah. Uh, she was the only one of the three who, whose, whose singing voice was dubbed, so that gives you an impression how bad she must have been, okay? okay? Uh -huh. yeah, because Clint Eastwood and Marvin are probably about the least. Yeah. It's probably a building in your city, which is older than this church, although I'm not sure <laughs> whether there's an older one in, in Portland, let's probably say. Not. It's, uh, it's it, it, was, it was completed just before the First World War, meaning about 1912, okay? so it's only about 100 wow. years old. It's, um, it was built after the, uh, after the uh, Commune de Paris, which was a revolt in 1871, the, uh, because uh, until then France had an emperor, it was called Napoleon III, who was a nephew of Napoleon I. And, uh, when the French lost lost the war against Germany, <laughs> they, uh, the, the emperor had to resign on the battlefield. Okay, so that was the prefect of Paris. It was called Hos Hosman, and that's why they called this the style Hosmanian. That's a very good example, really, although it was built a little later. Uh, but that's that's basically the style of downtown Paris. So we're standing here in front of. Uh, the Maison Rosé, which was owned by a famous French painter, Suzanne Valadon, and which was used in the film Funny Face as the home of the bogus existentialist philosopher. Fred Astaire comes here in his tiny car to free Audrey Hepburn from the claws of this evil. He comes here to free Audrey Hepburn. A statue uh, depicting the story of the uh, Passe Muraille, written by Marcel Aimé, one of the uh, famous um, French authors that young school children here in France learned very early on. About 50 or 60 windmills all over Montmartre, because at the time that was the only form of energy they had to grind their corn. Uh, there are only two left, they're not workable windmills anymore. One is around the corner and this is another one. This is called the Moulin de la Galette. Here, here we have the Rue Saint-Vincent, which is uh, the opening shot of Amélie. Amelie, remember that scene oh. where he, uh, yeah. a, a flashback with a little boy who won marbles? The marbles, yeah. yes, yes, at the and school. Then, uh, uh, it's inside. I was in the movie Amelie there was, uh, uh, when she was touring uh, the blind man. Okay. And along the route, you will see a, a horse's head, uh -huh. and that is the horse butcher shop. Oh, you see, okay. you can buy horse meat there. And now uh, they close, and of course, uh, so you can see they, they sell cell phones. the shop where Amelie does her shopping. Closed at the moment, unfortunately, but still recognizable. And we can see the, uh, the shop owner kept it the way it was. It was rearranged by the art directors of the movie. He liked it so much that he even kept the shop sign. But basically, now the shop has two names. One, Au Marché de la Butte, which is his own name, and then Maison Collignon, which looks a little bit worse for wear. I think it's time he changes it. Oh. It was made to withstand Parisian weather for a decade. It was made just for a fortnight 
of shooting. Go have a look at the Moulin Rouge. It's just around the corner. Number four is about there. Okay, I'll have to look at the Turn around the corner, that's where the building where Van Gogh used to live with his brother when he comes to Paris to visit his brother, basically. So it's his brother who lives here, really, but he, he used to live there for a year or so. So this is the, the Bateau de Lavoir, where Picasso invented cubism, as they say, and where he painted one of his most famous paintings, his first masterpiece, the Demoiselle d'Avignon. And this guy, the one with the big scarf, no. Aristide Bruyant, oh, yes. famous from the posters of Toulouse Lautrec, he, yes. to he used to own this. We talked about it earlier, the windmill. So just to give you an impression of what it would have looked like. The beer garden at the windmill on a good day. That's where it was. Bright, sunny, spring -like At the windmill day. on the hill. Yes. That's lovely. Yes. Okay. In a more familiar pose. Uh -huh.